Hi everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Janis, I'm a musician and producer and in this video I want to show you how you can quickly and easily set up your Nordstrom 3P as a MIDI controller in Ableton Live. Let's go! So the first thing you need to make sure is that there's some proper MIDI connection and you can do so either via some USB MIDI adapter, it looks like this, it has like USB on the other side but it's already plugged into my laptop or just some regular MIDI cable that you connect to your audio interface. And no matter what you use, the really important thing here is that the MIDI in goes into MIDI out and the MIDI out goes into MIDI in. So now I plug the MIDI in of the USB audio interface into the MIDI out of the Nord drum and now we should have some proper connection. And you can easily check it by just playing some pads and see in this upper right corner if this yellow light is flashing because this means we're receiving MIDI. And also if you arm the MIDI channel here, this MIDI track, you can see that here this bar actually shows that it's receiving some MIDI signal. And if that's not the case, you should check your MIDI preferences that you can find under live and preferences and then uh, link tempo MIDI because here you have a list of all your MIDI devices. And the only important thing for using the Nordrum as a standard MIDI controller is that the track field must be marked because um, here you can see now that there's the, in my case, USB MIDI interface. I mean, it won't be called Nord because it doesn't have some own USB out. So it's the device you use. And in my case, it's this USB MIDI interface and track has to be selected and especially within. And for out, you need it if you want to send stuff to the Nord, but this is actually, this video is for the other way around. So really make sure that track is selected. Also, by default in Ableton, those MIDI tracks are receiving MIDI from all channels. If for some reason it's not the case and it's on some channel, just remember that the Nord by default is always sending and receiving MIDI on channel 10. So if, for example, I would select channel 9 here, nothing would happen. You see on the upper right corner it's still receiving MIDI, but nothing is there. But on channel 10 again, it's receiving it. But if you just keep it on all channels, you don't have to worry about it. It's just for situations where you have a couple of MIDI devices and there could be some interference. Then it's also good to know that channel 10 by default is the one you have to pick. Also on the Nord drum, you have a MIDI menu where you can check things if something's not working and you can access it by pressing shift and MIDI here. And there are some settings where I'm even not exactly sure what they do, but I know that they are not relevant for the type of usage that you're looking for here. This is some sort of local function. I don't really know where you need it. Usually it's on on and this way it works. In the menu it says there's some setting with external sequencers where there could be some problems where you have to switch this off, but I think for this scenario here it doesn't apply. And if you click on it again, you also have the global channel because that's the one I mentioned, it's on 10. You can also change it here. So if you change it to eight, for example, it will always receive the MIDI signal on channel eight, but yeah, by default it's 10. You can also switch it off and then you can actually do some more individual things, but they are more interesting for scenarios where the Nord is receiving MIDI. And if you're interested in that, I made a video about it that I'm going to link on the upper corner because uh, you can also actually do some fun, th fun things this way. So be also warmly invited to check that out. But to stay focused on what we try for this video, let's check some other settings. Here you can switch to individual channels. So for every individual pet, you can also pick some individual channel. But again, this is more interesting for receiving and or some more complicated programmings that are again not really part of this video and here you this one is important because here you can change the individual notes because now you can see that for example the first pad has MIDI note 36 if you click here you see that this pad has 38 this one has 46 and so on they all have individual notes and I'm going to show you now in a second how this affects how you can use it in Ableton but let's actually finish going through those settings then those parts you also absolutely don't need. They are for some more complicated programmings again. And I'm just showing you what I have here. So if you have something different and there might be some problems, just check or be sure that with those settings here, it works. So this weird symbol here under PC, it's program change and CC. Um, this kind of 5R or SRA. Yeah, you can do quite some complex MIDI programming with it, but it really doesn't apply for this one. But now you know how it can be set up so everything you do works and here it's on send. 
And that's actually all you can do here and you don't have to worry about it if this is just the way it is as you saw and we can actually have a look on what happens now inside Ableton. So you can see if we would now load a drum rack and let's just load some basic drum kit and you can see if I play bass drum it's actually mapped already so they used the typical mapping that is used for bass drum and snare drum also here and here we have a open hi-hat you can I mean yeah it's not the closed one but you can change it I'm going to show it to you in a second then here you have the mid tom and in this case yeah it's just pre-mapped to some things but if you open the drum rack here you can change the individual MIDI notes for all parts and here under this section you have both the note and actually the name like how you would call it in music theory and it's great that you have the note because this is the one that also the Nord drum uses. So this was the open hi-hat but you say actually I want the closed hi-hat to be on this pad. So then you can just select some random other MIDI note for this one so it doesn't receive it anymore and for the open hi-hat, uh, for the closed hi-hat, sorry, where is it? I'm always so slow with finding the right sound. Ha, here. So now we have to find out, I didn't check so I have to go to the MIDI menu once more to see um, which note it is. Note So this one is 46, so for the closed hi-hat you can check for note 46 and we'll see that now the closed hi-hat is mapped to this pad. And this way you can adjust some pre-existing drum rack if you want to. Of course you can also completely do it from scratch. Let's actually delete this one, oh, actually I can't because it's the only one we have. So let's open some empty drum rack and now for example you could record something random. I don't hear it right now so it's completely random and of course now you only have a couple of notes here as you can see and in order to hear it you could now fold so you only see the ones you actually used and then if you you open your drum rack you can actually see which ones you play and then accordingly just drag individual sounds to those so if you maybe want to use this kick drum here Perfect, you have this kick drum. And then you check for the other ones. Here you probably want to have a snare. Bring it in and you have a snare here. And this way you can design then your own drum kits. So this is another way of working and um, just using it then in Ableton Live. You can also use the Nordrum 3P for triggering or stopping or starting clips. But before doing it we have to change one setting under on our preferences because if you want to use it for this type of message you also need to check the remote field here for the input because this is some other type of MIDI message not just some tone message that we were using now for the drum sounds. This is some more control message. Oh, is it control? I'm sometimes still also confused by MIDI but just be known that this type of message um, needs to be sent or uh, only works if you check this remote field. And now if we press command M we are in our MIDI mapping menu and we have to open it here because now we can click on everything that's marked as blue for example this clip and then if we hit this pad you see it's mapped so then we can go back by pressing command M again and so if I press this pad now it's actually start, it's triggering in this case because it's armed recording this clip and you can do it for everything like if you want to for some reason turn on and off the click track you can also do it with this pad um, as you can see and now it's mapped for two things and um, yeah this way you can also use it for any type of MIDI commands uh, and make life easier for you if you just need to do any of those things. By the way if this video has any value for you be warmly invited to take a second to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel because you can find more content about the Nordram 3P here and of course it just helps me a little to have some more interaction from you with this channel so if this video has some positive value for you be warmly invited and thanks in advance for doing so. But let's get back to our topic because I want to show you two more very practical things that you can use the MIDI function for 
that can make your life easier in a couple of situations. The first one is using the external instruments effect of Ableton and you can find it under instruments. It's only available in the, actually it's not in the smallest version, like the one you get for free often, the light, but you need the standard at least. And then you can load it here and also if you're using this kind of MIDI adapter, you have to also use the um, output now because you also send stuff to the Nord now. And now the nice thing is that if you select here your, in my case, the MIDI interface, and now you also have to select your input device. Actually, I haven't selected it here, so I have to choose my interface and I think I have it on three and four. So now you see there's some sound if I play it, but the nice thing is if I actually, now I'm gonna use my headphones in order to not play some random uh, part. So let's actually record some very simple beat. So I know this was really bad. And now you see we have a problem. We don't hear it because we don't, we have to select channel 10 here. Because here it actually is important where we send, oh my God, this is played so poorly. I'm sorry for that, but I'm sitting here not in the most comfortable position. It was just for demonstrating purposes. And let's actually do some quick quantization, Jesus Christ. But you get the point because now you can actually record your parts but not as some audio track but as some MIDI track. So once it's recorded you still hear it and could theoretically just let it play and then you can change parameters on the Nord. So it's extremely helpful for tweaking sounds so you don't have to hit a pad and tweak the sound with the other hand. You can just have both hands free and listen to that beat while tweaking the sound. That's extremely helpful. By the way, just one tiny remark in between. If you're interested in improving your technique with the Nord Drum 3P, I've made a class about learning drums specifically with a small electronic drum pad with some specially designed exercises and stuff that you can watch on Skillshare and with the link down below in the description, you can actually try it one month for free. So if this sounds interesting to you, also remember this and uh, be warmly invited to check that out. But let's get back to our topic now. Another thing that I find extremely helpful is for situations where you just record the audio. So I just opened here some audio track and selected the Nord. And so now we get the sound here. And then you just create a MIDI track as some sort of ghost track that doesn't even have some instrument on it, not even this instrument rack. So you only record the MIDI information. And because later you can actually sample your Nord drum and put individual effects on the sounds. I'm going to show you how, but first we need to record something. This time I try to focus a little more and um, just take a stick and play something very simple. So I arm both of those for recording. And let's actually So now you can see that I recorded some audio clip. And at the same time, the MIDI clip, but now it doesn't have any positive benefit for us. But what we can do now, which is really fun, is to, actually let's pause those, make another channel now, or actually clip, record another clip with just the individual samples. So let's see, we have one here of the kick and the snare. Has a quite a, had quite a long tail, it's, it's not optimal, but um, I'm going to duplicate it now. And with one of them, I'm only going to select the kick drum. Actually, no, I'm going to show it to you with the snare because it's a more practical approach. So let's say we want to sample the snare. And so we go here. Oh. So you see, we can hear a single snare hit now and the tail can be a little longer. Now we crop this sample so we only have the snare and now on the MIDI track we can for example insert some drum rack and now if we play just this track you see that the snare is always on D1 so now we just drag this, which one was it? This one. Uh, snare sample here and now if we play the MIDI track, it plays our sample snare and actually the fade sounds a bit weird so we make it a little 
gentler. And this gives us the chance to add individual effects to the snare, because if I play it now together with the original clip, you see, they are actually not as tight, but um, it doesn't, I don't actually know why. The MIDI clip is a little different than the audio track, but I realized also that due to my screen recording setup, it's a bit difficult to play things on time. There's a latency somewhere I have to figure out, but um, I won't do it now. For now, I um, will just put some reverb on this track. So you can use whatever you have. Let's just use some Valhalla Room, for example. And now, if you bring this in, you see, we actually have some chance to put reverb only on the snare drum. And you could do now also for the kick drum, for example, add some saturation or something like that. That gives you really great creative possibilities. And the only thing you have to do is to always remember to record a ghost track and possibly some individual samples, although you can really often also just find the samples inside your recording. You just have to look for the sections where there's some space and they don't overlap with something. But I find this really helpful and especially for adding a little reverb on the snare or delay. And also if you apply effects to make sure that they don't apply to the kick drum because it needs to be tight. Those types of things are just super nice and you can easily do it this way. So that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be really warmly invited to share anything in the comments if you feel like having more questions or maybe you even found out some other hacks of using MIDI in creative ways. Warm invitation to share it there. And also warm invitation again to subscribe to this channel because you can find more content about the Nord Drum 3P and any type of interaction really helps this channel to just grow a tiny bit more day by day. And one more invitation to check out some class I made about learning drums, specifically with some small electronic drum pad like the Nord Drum 3P that I made for Skillshare. And with the link down below in the description, you can actually do it one month for free without any strings attached. So if you're interested in that type of course, be warmly invited to check that out as well. Apart from that, I just wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.